Rides. Join me in welcoming Barbara Streisand. Barbara, thank you for taking this time out. You're welcome. First of all, my congratulations to you on your film of The Prince of Tides. It is a magnificent motion picture. I'm so glad you think that. And I want to thank you, too, for a movie that... A movie that is about people and love and not about high-tech gadgetry and so forth. I mean, there's, there's room for that, too. I can't I think, even work my VCR machine. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm so glad we have that kind of movie. I'm glad you me. appreciate it. What attracted you to filming The Prince of Ties? Was it the potential for your the role as an actress or as a filmmaker? No, as a filmmaker. Um, I just think, you know, life is about love and family and forgiveness and denial and secrets and the truth and healing. And uh, I, I don't know a subject that I'd rather make a film about, mm -hmm. you know, another subject I'd rather make a film about. I, I can't think of one. You so seem to have totally immersed yourself in everything about this. And being a Southerner, I so appreciated the way you, the way you captured the South on film. It's, it's, it's the true South. There's so many stereotypes I think we see mm -hmm. about the South. And from, from having spent so much time there, I'm mm -hmm. sure... Um, that's interesting. I'm glad you say that because when I made Yentl also, I didn't want to show stereotypes of Jews. It was like, you know, another Jewish wedding with uh, the kind of gossipy women. It was like, what? You know, I, I had studied, uh, just looked at a lot of research of pictures of uh, men who studied Talmud and the beauty in their faces, you know, the passion for learning. And I thought, I want to show that aspect of it. And the Southerner, too. It's like, well, Nick doesn't have a thick Southern accent, if you notice, either. Because a lot of the, even like yourself, uh, a lot of the English teachers we spoke to there, they didn't even have a, 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 a deep Southern mm -hmm. accent. So it varied a lot there, I saw. But uh, it's not stereotypical. I mean, you can't, I don't like stereotypes for anybody. Being no. a woman, being an actress, I don't like it. Yeah. So I don't want to do it in my work. Now, you can say that I'm crazy for thinking this, but I honestly feel that in the movies you've directed, there is a, there is a musical flow to them. And if I, mm -hmm. if I had to call this, this movie, I would, anything I would call it, variations on a, a theme of love, really. But mm -hmm. it really, it has a musical feel to it. Am mm -hmm. I off base on that? Or? You know, you're probably right. I mean, I, I didn't intend to do that, but I, uh, I think even directing scenes uh, even if they have no music behind them, there's a musical flow. There's a musical flow to life. Mm -hmm. And every scene has a different rhythm. And it's like, to me, a, a, a film is like a symphony. And not that I even thought about this consciously. I don't sit down and go, you know, this is the uh, rapid movement, you know. But in, in life, we don't want to be bored. Mm -hmm. So we sit and hear a piece of music. Well, first it's languid and, and luscious. And, and then all of a sudden, there are energies that are staccato and fast and sharp and cutty. And then there are scenes that should never have a camera cut. So I, I think that even though I, I don't think of, about it intellectually, I think it's just part of my nature. Mm -hmm. And probably I mean, comes out that way. Yeah, or this would apply not only to films but certainly to songs that are sent mm -hmm. to you. Do you do you know immediately if a piece of material, be it a song, a film, whatever, mm -hmm. is right for you, or do you sometimes have to listen to it four or five times or read it four or five times to know? I, I trust my first instinct on things. So uh, most of the time, I either react to something emotionally right away. Whether it's a painting I see, mm -hmm. a book I read. Sometimes it is interesting how one's own uh, feeling at the time can affect seeing a piece of work. I know because I went to see um, Sweeney Todd. All right, I'll never forget this. And I was with a person I didn't like being with. And I was having a terrible time. And this shows you about our perception of life and our perception of the world, our perception of, the, of our parents even, at a given time when you're coming from a certain inner space, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like it. I walked out after the first act. And everybody kept telling me, this is a brilliant piece. So I said, I'm going to go back and see this again. And I took my son. And I sat next to him, and I was enjoying being with him. 
And I thought this piece was absolutely brilliant. So it does sh show you that it, your own, you know, it's like if a writer comes to interview you and he's upset about his life. Most of the time, unless he's superhuman, he's going to project that onto the person he's interviewing. So, um, but as an artist, I mean, I can just tell you that, you know, when I hear a piece of music or read a script, I usually respond right away. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly hope we won't have to wait uh, Eight years. too much longer for another, <laughs> another film by Barbara Streisand. Uh, do you have something in mind, maybe? I'm not sure. I mean, I... I um I'm very drawn to this. I, I, I can't make a movie unless I'm, I feel passionately about mm -hmm. it. Because it just takes your life away, yeah. you know, it consumes me. Well, that is certainly what I think audiences will see in Prince of Tides, is tremendous passion and emotion and mm -hmm. uh, a, a very great film, I think. And I, um, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out. I really appreciate what you're saying.